Good evening children. <clears throat> Tonight I'm going to read you a wonderful book called Think of an Eel. So it's non-fiction and it's written by Karen Wallace and illustrated by Mike Bostock. Well, for thousands of years fishermen have watched every autumn as adult eels migrated down rivers into the sea and again every spring as the young eels returned but nobody knew what happened in between. Where did the adults go? And where were the young eels born? Today, we think we know the secret of the eel, but even now, no one has ever seen a wild eel lay eggs or an eel egg hatch. Isn't that strange? Now, when I was a little boy, I used to go fishing in a river in my hometown and I would often catch eels. And eels are so slippery that you cannot pick them up. They will wriggle out of your hands because they're covered in slime. And they wrap themselves around your fingers. And I always had to be very careful. I put the eels back safely. I never hurt an eel, but I used to catch them. I wasn't fishing for them. I was trying to catch fish. But eels will go for the bait just like fish do. Um, but they are incredible creatures, really slimy and uh, beautiful to see in or out of the water. So watch out for them next time you're sitting on a river bank. You'll see an eel swim by if the water's clear enough. Okay, so here's the story. Think of an eel. Think of an eel. He swims like a fish. He slides like a snake. There's a warm, weedy sea to the south of Bermuda. It's called the Sargasso. No wind ever blows there. No sailing ships sail there. For thousands of years there, a secret lay hidden. This salt, soupy sea is where eels are born. Deep down where it's blackest, eel egg becomes eel. He looks like a willow leaf, clear as a crystal. His fierce jutting mouth has teeth like a saw blade. He eats like a horse and swims up through the water. When baby eels are born in early spring. A real one is only about three centimeters long. Young eels from the Sargasso travel either to Europe or to America, whichever their parents did before them. Imagine this eel leaf and millions just like him swimming on waves across the wide sea. Well, some are unlucky. The seagulls are waiting. Beaks snap like scissors through wriggling water. Eels swim for three years till they reach the shore. But the river's too cold. There's still snow on the mountains. So they wait in the water and turn into an elver. Now an elver looks like a shoelace made out of glass. They arrive in Europe around Christmas time. They wait offshore until spring. And they wait, and as they wait, they turn into elvers. These lovely shoelaces made out of glass. When spring warms the shoreline, the smell of fresh water excites the elver. Into the river she swims like a mad thing. She wriggles up rapids, climbs rocks around waterfalls. River banks guide her. Nothing will stop her. Around a drowned oak stump, through twisting green weeds, a mud hole is hidden. Eel knows without thinking it's what they've been looking for. They slip through the ooze and make this hole their home. So mud holes, burrows and cracks in the riverbed are all homes for eels. In the fresh water, the elvers grow bigger and turn into yellow eels. 
Think of an eel. After years in the river, he's become slit-eyed and slimy and thick like a snake. He gulps stickleback eggs, eats shrimps and small fish. Eels feed mostly at night. If the river is empty, he swims from his mud hole, slips through the grass to steal snails from the pond. An eel can live out of water for two days, or longer if the ground is wet, breathing through its slimy skin. One day, eel stops eating. His stomach is shrinking. His long winding body turns silver and black. Eyes like black currants bulge into headlamps. And now, for the last time, eel slides from the mud hole. His years in the river are over forever. Silver eel waits for a night that is moonless when the rain from the mountains has flooded the stream. Silver eels usually leave the river in September or October. While they're waiting for a dark night, they sometimes get tangled up in a ball, lots of them all together. Then finally, they slip down the river, down to the seashore. The time has arrived for the eel's long journey home. For 80 days, silver eel swims through the ocean, squirms like a secret from seabird and sailor. There are millions, all the same, deep down in the water, swimming silently back to the Sargasso Sea. They have big eyes for seeing, especially in the darkness at the bottom of the sea. There's eel tomb and eel cradle in the weedy sargasso. After 80 days swimming, not eating, not sleeping, eel's long winding body is worn out and wasted. He spills the new life carried deep in his belly and then sinks through the sea like a used silver wrapper, like a piece of tin foil. The male's sperm fertilizes the female's eggs in the water. Deep down where it's blackest, eel egg then becomes eel. They look like a willow leaf, clear as a crystal. Fierce jutting mouth has teeth like a saw blade. They eat like a horse and swim up through the water. Imagine this eel leaf and millions just the same swimming on waves across the wide sea. Well, the circle of life is then complete for a friendly eel. What an amazing life cycle they have. Okay, well, there we are. That's the story for tonight. It's a true story, so I didn't make it up, and neither did Karen Wallace. That's as much as scientists know about eels so far. All right, well, good night. God bless. Mind how you go, and sleep well tonight, and I will give you another story tomorrow night. God bless.